Hola, mi gente linda, and welcome to Panavision, the Todo Soflo podcast that brings you all local stories, news, and music with your super healthy and energetic host, Aneri Clari, the co-founders of Panamia Club. Funny, funny. Uh, Panamia Club is a collective that's making supporting local creatives and entrepreneurs easier than all your tias following you on threads on the, your thread account yeah every episode will invite a locally based band to discuss what they're up to in their community and we'll also highlight a new release by a local musician this is our final episode of the panavision season one and we have a special behind the scenes episode for you featuring the people that have made panavision possible this whole time today we're going to be inviting nick from miami community radio to talk about his experiences building a creative collective in miami and then later, we're, we're going to hear from Goon Green, um, also from Miami Community Radio, on, and also from House Show, actually, um, on his latest projects and also his experience as a community and event organizer. But before then, Annette, how are you doing? I am chilling. Chilling. I am chilling. chilling. I took some cough medicine before I got here. Um, and I think I, I'm like starting to feel it kick in. Okay, okay. So, you know... <laughs> Well, you're good you're good so for this episode we're gonna do something different i'm gonna list all the new panas so we're gonna do them real fast right okay, now okay okay we got I'll 20 just, i'll huckle you okay yeah I'll yeah you. you'll be my hype woman yeah yeah okay okay yeah. okay all right awesome so we have 27 new panas for you so brace for it um we have oop nope go up go up go up go up cool 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 a little bit ooh, more. Ooh, hold up oh, all right script. All right, cool, cool, cool. We have PZ Visuals, they're a photographer based in Miami. We also have Diego Melgar and the third year, also a musical collective. Um, there's also V Bliss Nails, they're a nail tech based out of, I think, Broward. Um, Shameless by Liz, they're a clothing brand. Nian Terrellin, they're a spoken word poet. Naya. Our first, Naya? Naya, Naya first, first poet, awesome. We have Meet the Veggies, they're a tropical barbecue and breakfast food truck. It's very fun. We have La Bruja del 305. They're a tarot and oracle card reader. We also have Space Baby, who is a musician that's focusing our, their focus is on music that is about social change. So they have a song out about canceling rent. So it's called Cancel Rent, I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was fun. Um, there's also Mio Santana, uh, their divine journey there. They do a lot of self-love coaching and um, stuff like that. There's also Devious Elements Apparel, their clothing brand. Also Tattoos by Lou, which I think they have a couple locations and I have two tattoos by them. So shout out to you, Lou. Yes. Yes. Also, we have Sunnyside Village Store, which they are the people that host the Sunnyside Village Market. Yes. And they actually have an event. So if you have nothing to do right now yeah. and you want to <laughs> run to go to art jam which is their event that is happening right now yeah, from seven to that. nine you can do that mm -hmm. if you're based in broward mm -hmm. yeah sounds fun uh there's also sense of abundance they're a candle maker based out of broward we have i'm excited about this one less chick llc they're an event organizer servicing the lesbian community in miami dade and broward we also have ionet studios LLC, um, and they are a production house um, that's worked with a lot of our partners like El Igor, um, who we had on last time, um, and they work primarily with immigrants and people of color, so if yeah. you are a musician, check them out. Really cool. Yeah. Lots we also of really interesting work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was crazy. We hadn't heard of them until recently. Yeah. 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 And they've like worked with a lot of people, even if they're not in a directory, but also like Frog Show Mercy and Cannibal yeah. Kids. And people who we want on the directory. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, sometimes we have these like small pockets where we just like don't see. So if you want someone on the directory, please send them to us. We'll reach out. Um, we also have Kadream. They're helping build brand recognition through photography and creative design. We have Star Girl Styles, who is a hairstylist specializing in alternative cuts and really interesting colors. I like their stuff. Um, we have Bohemian Kitchen, another food truck here based in Miami. Woo! Whoop! And also Backroom Sessions, they're an event organizer here in Miami as well, but they've done some in Broward, I think, too. Yeah. We have Nami Flair, who's our first burlesque, burlesque dancer. dancer. Yes. Very excited about that one. Mm -hmm. And then we have DJ Luna, 
uh dj luna is based in miami and you might have seen them at the witches of miami events because they frequent it um we also have keek's corner they're a plant store located in the heart of little havana Aww. Mm-hmm. yeah Aww, yeah yes. it's really cute I, it's been a while since i've gotten a new plant a new plant yeah yeah no i want a new plant baby I don't suggest it for but yeah no we can do like you can like build up okay so like i'll a- i'll get a new plant and then i'll just give it to you so you can take care of it again and then i'll have a shelf that's just all the plants that annette has given me <laughs> it's great yeah um we have roses cats and garnets um they're a holistic divination collective um, we also have the Dancing Elephant. Really excited about this one. It's a metaphysical and bookstore based in Lake Worth, all the way in Lake Worth. Cool. Um, we also have Little Fire 360 photo booth rentals, and they do, you guessed it, 360 photo booth rentals. Okay. Yeah, okay. for all sorts of events. Okay. And then our first comedian. Yes. Yes. And it's a big one. It's a, a big, big, fish a big comedian. one. <laughs> Yes. Big comedian, Sergio Mendes. Um, they're a stand-up comedian, but they're also the founder of Magic City Comedy. Fantastic. So, yes. Welcome, Sergio. We're, welcome. And we also have Alex. Um, he is the founder of Kameha Media Group. They're a production company based out of Miami, but they'll travel travel to wherever um, to do production. So, yeah. And that brings us to... 270 members people yes we are almost at 300 we're gonna make 300 this month isn't yeah. that crazy that's our goal it's been our goal since january and we're here yeah, yeah. it's incredible we're, it's we're well not to spoil but we are going to be marking a pretty big anniversary while we are also hitting this 300 mark so that's really exciting yes um and thank you so much to everybody who joined it's exciting as always to see our community grow and how many niches we are starting to get uh but we still have gaps that we want to fill always Mm -hmm. so especially if you are somebody practicing in the service industry whether you're a therapist whether you're an ac repair person an electrician a lawyer a lawyer a barber like if you're in the services please you're more than welcome to join in our our directory we have a lot of creatives but we also have so much space for our services Mm -hmm. um and also creatives of broward and creatives of west palm beach we please you are more than welcome to join our directory those are also gaps that we're trying to fill we love miami we love miami dade um but we panamia club is miami dade broward and west palm beach county and we want we want all you all. all the panas yes Yes. So if you are interested in joining the directory, it's simple. All you have to do is fill out a form. Um, So please DM us at Panamia Club and we'll go ahead and share that with you. Yes. And a big shout out also to Jeremy and Jen, who are the developers that are helping us create the keyword searchable directory. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as always, it's important to stay educated about what's going on with our panas and the local community. Luckily, Gladi and I are here to catch you up on lo que está pasando in South Florida in our segment, Meanwhile, Meanwhile in SoFlo. So oh my gosh, we did that. I it tried was to do something different. <laughs> no, it works. It works. We did it at the same time. Yes. Okay. There's something happening tonight in Miami. I'm pretty sure. I think I'm so. Like there for sure. This is a, this is actually a shout out to our our dear friends, Always Lunas, Third Spaces, and Galactic Spice. There are three different accounts that are always posting out about events local independent events here in Miami. Um, so if you don't know what's happening, go ahead and check them out. Find something that you, you're interested in. Yeah, find at, your community. at all times, people always think I know what's going on, but it's really because I follow always yeah. Lunas. <laughs> and they're like, yo, what's happening this weekend? And I'm like, one second. So, yeah. so if you want to be that person, you know what to do. Yes. Oh, yeah. So anyways, um, July 16th, Parody, our soon-to-be fun across our fingers, is celebrating their two-year anniversary with pizza and paper plates shindig. So if you um, know this space, it's an incredible bookstore Mm -hmm. um, and very beloved in the community. Definitely come on by, (laughs) swing down, have some pizza. Yeah, it's over in North Miami, so it's a really cute area. Yeah. Um, really good vibes. There's also tonight, um, there's also something happening in Little Havana. It's called The Potion. Normally it happens up in Broward and Hollywood, but this time it's happening over in Little Havana. And our dear friends, Rogue Apothecary, are going to be vending there, providing CBD joints and all sorts of things. So definitely head, head that way if you are in the area. 
Absolutely. And then, really exciting announcement. So, MCR, Miami Community Radio, just came out with their volume one compilation of music produced by past and present residents called MCR Records. So, if you've ever tuned into MCR and see the, seen the incredible artists that are DJing here, um, definitely check it out. It's like more of that same incredible music on that compilation. Yes, and then there's also, we have news. Um, actually, there is also a house show that's happening. House that we show just found that out about. we just found out about. It's July 16th, 15th, 15th. 15th. July 15th, there's going to be a house show. Um, if you're not aware, we had a house show over in March, back in March. Called Panalandia. In, called Panalandia. There are these incredible activation um events that happen there's musicians there's workshops um it's just a really chill and genuine vibe so um definitely pass through if you haven't checked out already um and then lastly uh drag story hour has decided to close its miami chapter um and the group made the announcement wednesday citing that the physical citing the physical safety of their storytellers as the reason. And so we talked a little bit about this last last week or last segment um, when these laws are passing that are really affecting marginalized communities. Um, and our ask to you is just to check in with your with your queer community during this time. Last time we were specifically rep re um we were specifically referencing the laws that pass on July 1st that are very anti-immigration, and this time we're talking about the laws that recently passed that are very anti-queer, specifically anti-drag. Um, so, and we're seeing the consequences. That unfortunately, these spaces are, are, you know, essentially like leaving because they are afraid for their safety, which is yeah, yeah. And and there are so many queer members in our community and our collective. So. They definitely contribute so much vibrancy and so much beautiful energy. Um, so just check in on them. Yeah. But in Panamia Club views, <laughs> hold on, I'm going to say that again so we can have like more of a vibe switch. <clears throat> in Panamia Club news, <laughs> um, July 11th is going to be our next Club de Pana, and it's our first Club de Pana at Artisan's Playhouse, which yes. is really, really fun. And yes. we are going to be having the, the next few Club de Panas at Artisan's Playhouse like once a month on Tuesdays. So keep your eye out. We're going to tell you which Tuesday of the month it is. In this case, it's going to be the 11th, so next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And what you can expect is I'm going to Whoa. OK. Oh, OK. A little bit of power outage, don't worry. I'm going to be leading a cool DIY sculpture activity, and there's also going to be an open mic. So please join us for an early weeknight escape full of fun and creativity. And then also, we are putting together, yay, thank you, a show called Piñagria. Um, we're collaborating. It's going to be at your Eleanor over in Wynwood. There's free parking. Um, we're going to be inviting a whole bunch of different first and second generation musicians and artists to come and be a part of that. Um, there'll be food. There's going to be vendors, amazing music. We might have a workshop. Details to come out soon. We'll have the flyer out by next week. Um, but definitely plan to come. It's going to be on July 29th. Absolutely. Yes. And then um, just really quick, we announced this last time, but we recently we finished pulling off our event sponsorship package. If you are putting together a local event and would like Panamia us to yes. sponsor it, please reach out to us so you can find out how we can help. We've been putting it together. We've been putting it together. We're really excited and uh, to basically Promote, share our community share, with you yeah. too. We have like a list of vendors. We have like venues that we can that you can access. Um, so like let us help you put on more engaging events and events that are like more integrated with the local community. 100%. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And then our last news is actually very near and dear to our hearts. Um, we're turning one year old, one years old. Yay. One. Yeah. On in August. So it's crazy. Me and Annette have been doing this for an entire year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so look we're how great. We look doing it. Yeah. <laughs> And so uh, later in August, like first week of August, we want to have like a town hall with all of our members and also prospective members just to like chat and catch up and celebrate together and maybe talk about the direction that this is taking and future plans. And then we might have a little party sometime as well. So something low key. I hope we have a little party. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's we'll it's the goal. We're, we're gonna goal. we're definitely gonna try and make that happen. Party for August. Yeah. Yes. Why don't we have a birthday party, please? I want it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I mean, that's it for meanwhile in SoFlo. Uh, and if you, uh, as always, if you have anything interesting you want to bring up next time, please don't hesitate to DM us. Yes. Okay. Now that we're all caught up with the community news and Panamia news and all the new members, no now news. yes, we can now finally bring in our lovely guest. Nick Padilla, the co-founder of Miami Community Radio. Woo! Come on up. Welcome, welcome, Nick. Welcome. Thanks for the warm welcome. Of course. What's up? Hello. <laughs> I think it was like after the second or third live episode that we had with Miami Community Radio, we were like, we want you to be a guest. And it's finally happening. So it's here. Yeah. It's manifesting. It's here. Yeah, it's unfolding. Yeah, this is great. This is the best way to close out the season, too. Yep. I think. Yeah, I mean, it's very meta. So just kind <laughs> of like interviewing one of the people that put their heart and their soul, sweat equity, like a lot of sacrifice, a lot of ups and downs, but um, every second worth it, right? Like super meta. So thank you for considering not only me, but also Phil last moment because I'm really excited for you two to be speaking with Phil because uh, this wouldn't be possible without him and Mao, you know, so just respect and gratitude and honor to the core team. So, yeah. Oh, Aww. incredible. Okay. Yay. <laughs> we love when people shout other people out. Yes. That's the whole yes. point. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we know a little bit about you because we were outside talking for about an hour, um, but... For those of you who are just meeting you, um, what, how, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so <clears throat> I am just like all of us, a temporary incarnation uh, that maybe lives until 80, 100, you know, just kind of like a vessel floating through this weird rock in the middle of space, mostly water, like 70% water, um, and has the privilege to experience life. Right. And then from like an incarnation standpoint, I'm just, uh, you know, someone that has a diasporic family background. Uh, mom was born in Venezuela. Uh, dad is from Puerto Rico and grew up in Little Havana here in Miami. Interdisciplinary artist, independent researcher, uh, co-founder, entrepreneur. So that's this incarnation. That's who you're speaking to right now. So, yeah. That's lovely. Awesome. And um, I, I'd like to know a little bit about um, kind of the reason why we're standing here, right? Why we're, well, not we're standing, we're sitting, okay? But like, what, because um, some people ask us like, wow, why, how are you doing this podcast? And we're like, oh, we're residents of this, this, this radio station. Um, and then we kind of start to explain it to them and then their eyes are kind of like, what? And um, I just wanted to, like, what is the official explanation of Miami Community Radio? So we have, like, public and private mission statements, like, for full transparency's sake. And those listening to the playback, I'm sure, have already gone through the filter of Panavision. Um, but we are a very experimental kind of organizational structure. We identify uh, loosely internally as a cooperative. Um, so we have not only organizational structure is experimental, but we also have technical sides that are very experimental. So we, we're a DAO, right? For those that don't know, it is a decentralized autonomous organization, uh, which means we pretty much have everything online in a database that's totally decentralized. Um, I'm gonna click pause for a second. Panavision and the panas that you all onboard is on a database, correct? Yes. Okay. The odds of that database being centralized is a lot higher than less likelihood of it being decentralized, right? Am I right or am I wrong? Is it like through Google Docs? Is it through Google Drive? Is it like through Google Sheets? Currently it's through Google Sheets, yeah. Okay, so there are decentralized models, which means like, let's say all the ISPs shut down, like Comcast and like all the trillion dollar companies that have right. very greedy people in power. Right. Um, let's say they shut down for whatever reason or it becomes like a techno-fascist kind of situation with all this technology around us. The idea of decentralized databases like Pinata, for example, or IPFS, which is what we have our smart contracts on with our residents, it's like a backup to centralization and centralized databases like AWS. Like a lot of businesses run on AWS. And for those that don't know, AWS is a hosting platform 
by Amazon. Amazon has a monopoly on telecommunications networks. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, the rabbit hole goes really deep, but I, the, the main idea is MCR is an experimental database uh, using decentralized autonomous organization and leveraging that to be able to push what it means to be a member of any organization really to have food assistance. You know, the, the next goal and dream for me personally is to secure housing assistance, right? Um, whether it's sitting down with greedy developers, unfortunately, or greedy politicians or, you know, whatever the situation is and negotiating a thousand dollars off of rent, right? With a quarterly based contract. So, um, I say this because MCR is very experimental, not again, not only in the organizational structure of it all, but also the technical side of things. And I think that's based off of my personal work experience in various industries, um, but also what Phil and Mauricio and, and myself agreed on prior to launching last year, um, because we need to like get out of this like mindset of like communism, like capitalism, you know, uh, for profit, nonprofit, all this duality, all this binary mm -hmm. logic that locks us into a specific way of fundraising, a specific way of operating and just experiment, like fuck the labels, you know, like at least from, from my standpoint. Right. Right. And, you know, I, I'm going to hold back cause we are in like public, uh, kind of broadcasting here, but like in private conversations, I can explore certain topics in more depth. But the point is, is that like, I encourage people to experiment. I encourage people to, uh, make things like MCR. Right. I wish MCR existed when I was like 18 or when I was like in my early 20s. Right. Like so many incredible intros happening here and referrals happening here um, and just have really authentic and genuine connections and eventually have a B2B network where like instead of working with a corporation, you're working with your homies that decided to be entrepreneurs and like work together. Right. That's mm -hmm. real resistance. That's integrated resistance because every dollar is a vote. Right. <laughs> like uh, and we're constantly voting for Jeff Bezos to be number one. We're constantly voting for like actively by right. going to Whole Foods and by going to these, you know, uh, or even paying for Netflix or something like this. Right. So anyways, that's like a whole tidbit. Um, it's not short. It's really deep, um, <laughs> but it's, and it's very interdisciplinary. It's very generalist. It's very like Renaissance-ish. But uh, yeah, MCR kind of bundles all that in one experimental organization. And uh, yeah, that's a, a long answer to what MCR actually is. Okay. No, that's really cool. And especially what you were talking about in the last part when you said that every dollar is a vote. And that's also like a very, I feel like aligned idea with what we are trying to accomplish with our project. Mm -hmm. And the whole reason mm -hmm. why we're trying to shift mm -hmm. towards local is because we're trying to kind of like impress upon the people that we're impacting that, hey, your dollar is a vote. Mm -hmm. So you can support these huge corporations or you can also support your neighbor that is, you know, trying to essentially make things work. And at the end of the day, too, it's a lot about extraction, right? It's like Miami makes the money and then the money is extracted from Miami from like s people's hands pretty much um, and then funneled to global corporations. Yeah. Even data. Like now yeah. we're kind of like money is going to be nothing. <laughs> like uh, I think most people don't think about things in that way because we're so caught up in this rat race, but it's actually data. <laughs> like yeah. corporations don't care about money. Like they run off of credit lines. Like they have billion dollar credit lines. Like they, they don't use money. Mm -hmm. Like it's all a sham, right? It's actually data. That's foundationally what it comes down to. And that's why I, and this is very subjective to each person, how much they know about this stuff, but I'm personally into the whole crypto thing because it's post-institutional wealth. It's post-slavery wealth. It's post, you know, you, you can't look at someone that made money off of like sugarcane farms, right? And like steel industry or even explosives and dynamites, you know, in San Francisco, for example, versus someone that's like a tech person from Silicon Valley and goes to, you know, Burning Man every, it's different. The wealth is different, right? Mm -hmm. The philosophy is different. The extractionism is different, right? Data has an infinite ceiling <laughs> and people don't, recognize or realize that but when it comes to data forensics it's a super trippy field that i highly recommend people go into a little bit but like the data that we're creating right now for multinational corporations is like really intense like eye tracking like how long we stay on a post how long we stay on a video like what we like what we don't like uh like and it's really advertising companies and marketing companies and so we've seen how extractionism of our data is way more detrimental than extractionism from a capitalistic standpoint. And uh, again, we just need to think like post-capitalism, 
I'm not sure if you all have heard of like Nick Cernick or Mark Fisher. Nope. Um, yeah, so Nick Cernick is like a philosopher from the University of London. He's an academic and a professor, uh, but he just discusses this term called platform capitalism. And I highly recommend the viewers online or people listening to this on the playback, just check them both out. Uh, Mark Fisher uh, is another very interesting person. Uh, unfortunately, he isn't with us anymore. But he has this term called capital realism. Uh, it's a book actually that he published and just really prophetic in many ways of what we're experiencing right now. And so, again, some people have like already said, you know, what's happening now is going to happen. And other people just like have no idea what we're going through. But I, I genuinely think that data is going to be the next currency, especially if you look at like the, you know, Chinese Communist Party. <laughs> like you can't even get into an Uber without your biometrics being scanned. I don't think people understand the implications of like how they operate over there and how terrifying from a data fascist standpoint it is and a techno fascist standpoint is. But it's like, that's where we're headed. And um, I just think we need to be more educated, more sovereign, and just be more mindful about like where we're hosting things, why we're hosting it on these places, why we're trusting people with this information. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna click hard pause there. I'm gonna screech the, the brakes, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Okay. That's, uh, no, that's really great. It's um, definitely, I feel like a, a topic that doesn't get um, d discussed too often, definitely. Um, but I wanted to ask you um, kind of like a little bit more about your journey and how you got here specifically and how it relates to the creation of MCR. Um, because I, I read a little bit about your bio and it's it, like, it's kind of like a little bit um, I don't want to say all over the place because you, you it seemed like you have sort of Miami as a home base, but you had also been working like here and there um, as a multidisciplinary artist. Um, experimenting. And yeah, yeah that's experimenting. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, a little bit more about like how those influences are like what you learned during exper experimenting and how, how like your version of experimenting has been. Yeah. Um, I would say, because I guess you're referring to like my main websites, like bio, like that what's public facing, not like any private stuff, like mainly. I mean, whatever you'd like to share. Yeah, I'm kind word, of asking okay. you was from the in general about word, your word. journey. Yeah. And so, yeah, like I, um, what I will say is like what was really life changing for me from a starting point, right, was quitting my full time job as a supervisor at Miami Aquarium and connecting very deeply with dolphins. Um, I still think they're very mystical and magical beings, especially knowing about the pink dolphins in the Amazon basin and river and how those are spirit animals and they visit people in their dreams and right. Like that's magical to me. And we still have no idea like in a contemporary context, the full understanding of some of these very advanced civilizations and, and species of aquatic animals. Um, I think Drexia also works with that energy very much. I'm not sure if you both have heard of Drexia before from Detroit. It's very aquatic, very... Um, so I quit my job at the Miami Aquarium as a supervisor, a photography supervisor. I was taking photos and doing sales at the same time. I'm like, this is so like soul-sucking and soulless. Like, I just got a raise. I just got promoted. I met the CEO. He flew out from like New Zealand and like, just to, like shake my hand and say, good job. You're leading your team in a great way. I'm like, fuck this. Like I, this is not, I'm not happy doing this. And so I put in my two weeks notice. They got me a cake. They got me a fucking, they were going to miss me so bad. And I got a one way ticket to Spain to volunteer at a Buddhist center. I didn't want anything to do with like this system that we're in at all. And I'm like, fuck it. Fuck like, fuck all of it. Like I need to find self enlightenment. I need to work through my Dharma. I need to like break, you know, karmatic cycles, da da da, da. and I just got deeper into Maya. I, I was going there to like <laughs> literally clean my generational trauma and all this stuff, and I just got deeper into it because that's just how the universe works. Like you, you plan to do things, and they just, you know, somehow the galactic council puts you in a position where it's like, no, you got to deal with this. Like you can't run away from this stuff. So, um, that was a huge wake up call for me. Where it's like, okay, like any regular person would be happy being a photographer making a pretty good amount of money and getting promoted and working your way up the corporate ladder doing what you love but 
there's something wrong there. It wasn't right for me. And like the spiritual pursuit was really important for me. That was a turning point personally. So as a result of that, my risk to reward ratio has been, that has been the main reference for it, you know, so to speak. So like even MCR was a risk, right? So fast forwarding to, to MCR and, and really addressing your, your question, um, this is a very non-conformist, anti-conformist, you know, grassroots foundational organization because of our individual experiences, but also because of what I've always wanted to manifest in this city, being born and raised in the city. And so like, I know how difficult it is trying to get a gig. I know how difficult it is like trying to get experience. I know how difficult it is trying to network with people. It's awkward. Why would you go to a networking event, right? But like, what happens if you just like take all that shit apart and you just invite all the homies to the office and they connect? And like, now it's not a networking event. You're just hanging out with friends and like maybe organically in conversation, you know, you have a conversation, you have a full-time job. You have a gig next month. You have a residency somewhere. That's happened here at the office. And so like, instead of conforming and being like, you know what? I have a good job. I'm working full time. I'm doing what I love. I like photography. I like sales. I'm going to stay here. It was like, no, I'm going to go to Spain and I'm going to go to a Buddhist center. And, um, that was kind of like a first glance into like embracing the unknown and the mystery rather than getting lost in the chaos. Cause a lot of people want to control different parts of their lives, but letting go of the controls where all the magic happens in my opinion. So, um, I guess that's like the starting point of like, which isn't in the bio, right? Of like how all that other stuff happened. So it was like before the first sentence of the bio, but. It said you, you did like music mixing for a Buddhist center. Ah, okay, word. Like so I, was, I put a sentence like in there. You put I put a sentence, sentence in there. In there. Okay. But it was so okay, out of place. Okay. I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> right. And it may sound like random, but I went from like constructing literally tents and cleaning bathrooms like with my hands at the Buddhist center to doing what I love there, which was audio mixing. So just because they asked and just because it unfolded in that way, I didn't have intentions of doing that, right? And uh, very magical and a lot of gratitude that I had that experience. So I just encourage everyone to like believe in your dreams. Like <laughs> don't be convinced by the illusion either. Just because you get to your dream and you realize, wait, I actually didn't want this. Pivot. Like do whatever you're called to do. Like, and don't care about what people think. Like people won't believe in you. People will tell you that it's not possible and that's okay. You just have to believe in yourself and like trust the process. So that's what I'd recommend based off of that real life experience, um, which is very rocky, but. That resonates a lot with me. I've been thinking a lot recently about how people think of longevity as being success. Mm. Like if you look at like an organization or, or a company and, you know, they went out of business for five in five years it, and because the, the entrepreneur like pivoted, there's like that idea is like, no, that didn't work out for them. It's like mm. and, and now that that like effort is now tarnished with like this idea that it wasn't worth it, that things have to last forever for them to be worthwhile. Mm. Um, and then also the idea that, yeah, work should be fun. Like it, it should be you should be working with friends like things should be joyful. And yeah. I, I think. We've just really been boggled down by the idea that we're all just going to be miserable for eight hours a day for five days a week, and then the rest of it will be f fun, right? Right. Yeah. Which is temporary. Right. So, because post-industrialization is like, there will be a post-post-industrialization, just so that everyone is fully aware of that, right? Like, just to, don't be so nihilist or deterministic or like, fucking like fatalist, like, oh, life is just a nine to five and that's it, like. Definitely not. Things are changing yeah. right now. Yeah, so. for sure. Yeah. Um, another question I had, um, because there's a lot of groups in Miami that, and in South Florida um, that are creating these amazing collectives, amazing groups. They're hosting events. Um, they, want to, they want to get out of the rat race as well, right? They see the issue. They're addressing it. Um, but I think... It's, it's speaking from experience, I think it's difficult to to kind of wear all the hats when you're just trying to help. Um, and so in your experience, how have you built sustainably and in a way that is healing? Like not just for MCR, but in your other endeavors as well. So this is a fantastic question. Um, I'm gonna have to say right off the bat, like I am incredibly privileged to be where I am in life right now. Luckily, I have been advising my wife 
at her small business and she has been really taking all of my advisement seriously, right? She's been pivoting from Google into Notion. She's been using the AI I've been recommending for her. And um, taking the back seat and like being a full-time dad versus being a full-time freelancer or like having a full-time, you know, work contract or even part-time work contract, it's just like a different frequency. So I will have to disclose, like I'm not on the grind like how I used to be, right? Like. Okay. Like I used to be grinding really hard. I'm not like that right now because we have a little baby and like a little baby needs love and it needs attention. And you know, you need to go for walks, you need to feed it, you need to, you know, um, like that's its own cosmic soul incarnation being like it needs the attention, right? So with that being said, like I, I'm currently not in the position to speak from a direct experiential standpoint right now, but in the past I have had a full-time job and a side job and another side job. I have also worked to the bone. I've had over like 25 jobs in my life. So like I've cleaned toilets, uh, I've worked at Five Guys. I used to scrape animal fat off of the walls. Mm. Like I just pouring Clorox on the floor. Like I, the stories that I have from trying to adapt to this society work-wise is like probably very similar to a lot of people in this room or like in Miami, right? So like what I would say is like the first step, literally the first step, create an EIN. Boom, just create an EIN, it's free. You can file uh, in the state of Florida, create an EIN, stop using your social security number when you file for invoices. Obviously this is for freelancers and people that have small businesses or are thinking about to have a small business. Don't pay anyone to create an EIN. It'll take a week, it won't take a long time. Just start to create the corporate veil and protect yourself and transition from an EIN to eventually getting an actual LLC, right? And get into that sole proprietorship mindset. That's what I would say, right? Because like, um, and more importantly, right? Like to your point, I like I genuinely feel people should be using what they love on their resume. That's like hands down, like at least one listing, one post. I'll give you an example. MCR. I was having this conversation with Mauricio and Phil. We were speaking to some VJ artists that are going to be helping us out for an activate a major activation that's uh, coming into fruition. Um, in the coming months. And we're gonna have like a public announcement about this. We've just been working super hard on this large budget, a lot of opportunity. We're booking a bunch of people, just like super grateful for all that, right? Um, a lot of sustainability to your point. I was telling them like leverage this in your favor. I don't wanna just open the door for you three, you know, Mauricio and myself and Phil don't wanna open up the door to you three Think about a runner, think about an assistant, think about an intern, think about a volunteer so that they can have that direct experience to this major manifestation so that you're able to share the opportunity and hold the door open for the person behind you. And I think we forget that so much because I have homies, I have friends that are very successful now. They're touring, they have major contracts, they're working with major artists. I love them so much. We're different people, unfortunately. That's just what life, life circumstances, that's just how things, right? right? So, um, but it's a matter of leaving the door open, especially for those that work hard. Right. And I know what that feels like. I know what it feels like not having the door left open and just seeing the door closed in front of me. And there's just like a huge divider where it's like we have different taste in food, different tastes of culture, different. Like we're just different people now. Right. And we love each other still, but it's like still, you know, like we're not the same. And I think growth is important, but at the same time, you need to be careful with who you become. And you can't just say yes to whatever opportunity manifests because uh, it's very easy to become soulless and to work with very dark energies, especially in the entertainment industry. So with that being said, I'd say to put in your resume an event that you did as running or that you did stage design for or that you did um, maybe even MCR here. Like I helped do production, video production, live stream production here at MCR for a day, right? You don't need to specify the length of time. You can just say 2023. 20, that's the tricky thing with resumes. And then you'll start to see your resume becomes a reflection of who you are versus this identity that you don't identify with at all. It's like, okay, so what I worked at Google, so what I worked at da da da, so what, like I don't care about any of these accomplishments. I'm gonna put what I'm actually, you know, very interested and passionate about in my resume and my CV. And so obviously applying to specific places is really important to consider, right? It doesn't matter if you're, you know, putting all that stuff in your resume. If you give that to someone that's a multinational, like a Raytheon or like a, a military contractor, they're not going to care about your creative endeavors. So context is important, right? Maybe applying for like the Wynwood uh, grant distribution fund, it makes more sense, right? Or um, 
I don't know, resident advisor, if you've written articles for, for New Times or something like this, right? So context is very important. But I would say uh, a direct first step for those that don't want to be entrepreneurs, which is kind of a cop-out, but um, I would say to put the things that you have done legitimately into your CV, into your resume, and like talk about it during interviews. Um, that's like a cool first step to pivot and transition from that like, oh, I hate my job into like, I hate my job less, you know what I mean? And then yeah. eventually it's like, oh, I love my job. These are like amazing people, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, well, thank you so much, Nick, for coming on and having this lovely conversation with us. Um, and if you want to hear more about Nick and his wisdom and all he has to say about these incredible topics, you can follow him. Do you want me to shout out your socials? Yeah, I'm, I'm open to it, yeah. It's um, NGP Data on yeah. Instagram. Yeah. And then, of course, follow Miami Community Radio on Instagram as well. Thank you. But yeah, cool. thank you so much thank for you. stopping by. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. you. Yes. So now, now yes. we are going to be uh, inviting our incredible friend, Goon Green. Yes. Our friend and Pana. Goon Green from MCR and also from House Show and Casa Crea. Yeah. Our friend does a lot. <laughs> uh, but first, we're going to hear a song. Are you going to play your song? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And no, I'm happy to play um, a release that I put out via the Miami Community Radio compilation. Actually, uh, I wanted to highlight that since it dropped at midnight today. Um, congrats. Thank you guys. Oh, thanks. Congrats. Yeah. Congrats to, to all the people who, who contributed. Definitely took a village. 16 different contributors. Um, I'll just read them in order, honestly. Justice A. Gonzalez, DJ Tamsom, Control Opt, Dune Dogs, La Grand Voyage, Near Dark, Saiba Shadi, Nicholas G. Padilla, Data Breach, um, also known as Rude Boy, Kung Pao, Nezaret, Lengua, Harold L. Souk, who had the initial conception to put together this compilation, so credit to him, Lotion, Mystics, and then myself. Um, yeah, um, yeah, so I'll just play. Is that just off the top of your head? No, or I'm reading it. Oh, okay. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Okay. Uh, I could have I could, I could memorized it, but no, 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 I'm definitely reading it <laughs> off, of the, uh, off of the display here. But yeah, so I, I thought to play Nicholas's track, so I'll probably do that first. And then after that, I'll play my own track. And then we can talk about some of the other things that you brought up. Thank you for the extremely nice introduction. Of course. Um, just like briefly, I just wanted to mention that Philip has been behind that desk almost all of our episodes that we produced this season. And he has been just so incredible. You've been Valuable. so incredible mm -hmm. in this like you know, we come to you like last minute and frenzied and like never knowing what the fuck we're doing. <laughs> no, you guys and are organized. You, you always, you always come through and we, we appreciate that endlessly every time. No, I appreciate you guys. No, it's been really uh, a pleasure and an honor to work together in this context. Um, and to like, yeah, just use the platform as a way to, to give you guys that, that runway for this, this project that you guys are working on, which is very connected to Miami community radio and House Show and Casa Crea, um, the three projects that that I've been um, working on for the part better part of a year and a half. Uh, House Show a little bit longer, but Casa Crea and, and Miami Community Radio actually synced up around the same time. But no, it's been beautiful seeing the season come together, all the different interviews. Um, I was super grateful to be able to be in the space for, for many of those interviews. I highly recommend to those checking out the, the live stream or on YouTube after the fact. Um, to check out that uh, all the the previous episodes, um, the f the the other five episodes of of this um, your first season and this season two of Miami Community Radio overall, um, having started season one, the beginning of this year after the the trial preseason slash beta season last year, um, but anyway we'll we'll get into all that um, after. But I can just play these tracks for now. This first track uh, by Nicholas G. Padilla entitled Ooh. Contact. Thank you. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. That's it. Yeah. So that was contact. Oh, that was cool. That was cool. It really fire track. You said contact? Yes, contact. Like yep. Alien contact. Um, that's the eighth track out of 16. So right there, smack dab in the middle. Okay. Highly awesome. recommend to everyone to check out Nicholas GPD's um, discography. Some incredible work, really masterful productions. Um, that's how we initially connected is through me discovering him via space tapes and his releases there um, and trying to get inside of some of this local music in the scene. Credit to WVUM for, for putting all that music in their rotation and that's essentially how I discovered it. And then being really, really inspired by um, his Parrot Jungle release um, from late 2020, reaching out to him to interview him as a part of my radio program at the time, which um, was more so focused on jazz and improvised music at the time, but I felt that I wanted to uh, explore this project because there was just something. Uh, I've never really seen music released in that way. It was really, really incredible. Um, the whole, like, the, the Bandcamp download included, like, all this different uh, resources, documents related to the inspiration of the project, and just this whole wealth of, um, yeah, material related to kind of where it all came from, which was... Uh, as someone who enjoys like getting deeper into um, deeper into what how, how projects come about, it was like just um, really blowing me away. So <clears throat> I reached out to him to to put together the interview, and then we were able to to connect for the interview, um, and got pretty pretty in depth in the interview. Definitely more more in depth than a, like a, a standard interview, whatever that means. Um, and then, yeah, then I had gone out to uh, him, see him spin with um, INVT at this event um, nice. at like 3100, which is a space that hasn't been activated in, in a, a little while now. But that was a pretty cool event. Really enjoyed my time. And I connected with his wife, Sylvia, at the time. We talked a lot about um, many different things, but specifically kind of locked in on this discussion of like, alternative education, um, specifically homeschooling, because I am so I was homeschooled when I was younger um, until high school, so I've had that experience. Um, and then, yeah, just speaking to them about that. And then we became friends at that time. Um, and um, that's that leads to Miami Community Radio. I know you guys didn't even ask a question yet, but I'm just kind of, it's all coming together naturally, I guess, in the way that I'm saying it, so. That 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 led to Miami Community Radio, because Through those Nick personal connections. Well, yes, because Nick knew of me as the kind of like radio person through WVUM because I interviewed him on my show as the general manager at the time. Um, so when he and Mauricio had the concept to activate the radio station idea, um, they thought of me, and I came in uh, to, to speak with them about how to activate the project and then everything gelled really organically in, in those those early meetings so we just decided to become co-founders um and like nick was saying earlier though the the project is intentionally structured as like a cooperative in terms of equal ownership between all the contributors and residents so while we are co-founders because we're the first people that put the idea together we're not above anyone else in the organization. Um, we intentionally wanted to build it in such a way where there isn't like the hierarchy that we saw displayed in other spaces that ended up kind of eroding um, what the core intentionality was. So put a lot of thought into that um, underpinning related to ethos and mission statement. And like Nick said, there's the external and the internal mission statement in terms of what we're trying to build together with the community, always open to different ideas from different people. Um, yeah, so then we, we, we founded and s launched it last April 2nd. So we're now um, like 15 months in or something like that. Um, the first, all of 2022 was like a quote unquote beta season. So we were just kind of testing the water, seeing how everything flowed. And we just built the schedule kind of in such a way where everyone who was a, resident at th from the beginning of, of April 2nd. They just stayed a resident unless they wanted to step away. And then we brought in more and more people and just kept building it up until the schedule was extremely full towards the end of the year. Um, and we are always planned to do it. It's not like that made us realize that. But uh, yeah, we just wanted to create a structure where there's like a natural refresh period. So new people can come in and it's not like, 
oh, this person's had the Friday 8 to 10 slot for three years and they're never giving it up. And um, being more like fluid, I guess, with the programming and, and trying to platform more people. So that's why we launched the season structure this year, having the first season starting January 30th. And then you guys have been a part of the season two, um, which today's the second to last day. So thanks to everyone who's tuned in live during season two. We are now at the end. It's crazy to, to say Ooh. time has been absolutely flying by, but yeah, amazing season. A lot of incredible residents, a lot of incredible music and ideas being presented. Um, but yeah, I think I'll, I'll leave it there. I don't know if you guys have like specific uh, questions to ask or anything. What just occurred to me, um, and you don't have to answer it, but are there any residents in particular that you really liked this season? Hmm. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say what my mom usually says, which is that she doesn't pick favorites, <laughs> um, which I agree with. Um, you know, obviously there's certain music that, certain people will connect with more and other people won't uh you know won't like as much i've been saying that to my students recently teaching teaching some younger kids and just talking about like just trying to make sure that they understand that it's okay to have different tastes um and that they're not required to like something just because i'm showing it to them or not required to like something because someone else likes it um and that is something that i do kind of intentionally is like i'll try to put on people through mcr and through house show which is my other like event project that i've been doing for a little bit longer i'll intentionally put people on that i don't really necessarily um resonate with a hundred percent with what they're doing just because i feel like someone else will presumably resonate with it and i feel like there's a lot of booking within the scene that happens more so from like personal taste which is cool you know like if that's what people are passionate about then that's going to make for a better experience because you know you're booking someone that you actually into and then it creates this like kind of like I'm not disparaging that whatsoever but yeah that's something that I try to do intentionally um yeah it's tough because I I would I kind of wanted to say like all the names I don't like I don't want to imply um preferential uh but there, there's a lot of really cool shows everyone should check out every single video that we've posted on my that's, community radio that's okay, that's all fine. time <laughs> um okay but I do want to ask you about like your your two other projects. Pro other projects yes. yes like tell us about them how they came about how they started what's the intentionality behind them thanks and for where asking are you seeing going in the future good question yeah um thank you for thank you for asking that and for yeah taking the time to to put that that forward definitely um projects that uh, i'm very passionate about and just trying to really similar honestly to the the uh, ethos of Miami Community Radio um, in terms of building the community in a grassroots way that's done for the sake of the art and the moment and not uh, focused on external markers of quote unquote success. Kind of to your point earlier of like what people, how people perceive longevity and what a quote unquote successful project is. Um, those considerations are not really how I approach it. Um, but anyway, just to give the context on, I'll start with House Show because that's the first project that I, that I launched, um, definitely with a lot of help throughout the way. But in terms of the, the, shall we say, core team, I've kind of intentionally not built a team with House Show and just kept it more of a solo venture. Although that being said, I still collaborate with people in like, you know, event capacities, like I've worked with you guys before and this event on July 15th, I'm actually working with a band, which I normally wouldn't do, um, but there was like a level of intentionality in our meeting that I felt like it, it, it synced up for us to, to collaborate in that sense. Because I don't think about it as like a venue, but more so like a project and a space, if that makes sense. So I don't want to have things happen in the space that aren't synced up with like what the kind of deeper vision is. Um, but anyway, how House Show started was like, it's an idea that I had, it's an idea that many people have had, but it's an idea that I've had since like 2020, 2021. I was living in like an efficiency um, in South Miami when I was going to school and it was mostly fine, but then I started having issues with noise complaints and I was like, I don't want to live in anything other than a single family if I can find something that works for me because I don't want to have to deal with noise complaints of like, uh, you know, everything else I would have 
probably had noise complaints come down. So yeah, I was like really locked in on trying to find that and worked out that I found another place, South Miami, that was like a weird, like two, one single family. So kind of a small house, um, but really nice property. Unfortunately though, I wasn't really able to do much there because it was like still COVID and I wasn't like trying to have like a lot of um, like, you know, super large events and ended up, I probably would have gotten screwed for them anyway. Cause my landlady was like terrible and she was like randomly in town. The one event that I had and like ended up giving me shit about it. And it's just like this whole situation um, that was super annoying. Cause I thought that the neighborhood was like perfect for that. Cause everyone was like a musician slash like, like there's stuff that would go down in that. It's always a toss up, I guess, in terms of the neighborhood. But yeah, I wasn't really able to do much there. I did, however, do two shows there through WVUM that I guess was kind of like the root or the seed, you could say, of of House Show. It was this mini series that I called like Situations Galore. Um, yeah, I did the first one in like November of 2020 or something. And then I did the second one on May 18th, 2021. And that was an insanely inspirational experience. Just, um, yeah, a lot of incredible people were there. Nick was there. A lot of other community members were there. Um, uh, mutual friend Steffi SDRV was there, one of her first performances. Um, yeah, just really, really cool, like, community kind of vibes. And we live streamed that on WVM's Twitch, which I don't know what the – how the viewing or auditory experience was for, for the people uh, logged in. But uh, live in the moment, it was at least good. And, and we did archive it somewhere in the vault. Actually, now that I say that, I think that second one was actually pretty good. The first one, we had a lot of issues, and I think the recordings ended up being not very good. But the second one actually uh, did, a, did a pretty good job. And that leads me to how it went to house show. Was like There was this engineer that I worked with, this guy, Jeremy Zacuto. Shout out to him. Um, who I was like, I did some shows with him. I did like some live performances at WVUM. Like he would be like my guy, basically. Like we set this up together, and he would do the do the engineering for me and all that stuff. And then I'd you know organize the show. So he engineered this show on the 18th. Um, and then he was about to leave town after that. So I was I wanted to do one more thing with him, basically. Like, I had the idea to start the concept. It's not like that was the moment where I was like, let me do this. You know, obviously, the the seed was already planted. It was eventually going to come into fruition. But that was kind of like when I was like, oh, let me, like, squeeze it in before he leaves town, right? So, like, July 2nd, I want to say, um, possibly 3rd, um, 2021 was, like, the very first house show. Super small. Like, I just hit up um, all my friends that I knew made music. Um some of the people I wasn't as close to, but that one was definitely like, I wasn't super connected to, to a lot of people yet. So I was just hitting up the people that I knew, which was still really dope performers in my opinion, but that show is really special. And then there's another show that I did in August 21st of 2021 house show zero zero two that that was also like just the energy was uh, hard to describe, but then that, inspired um this collab with um uh, omnifest we did two omnifest that year i was working at a pretty frenetic pace in that first year because i didn't have the radio outlet this is before mcr and but after wvum right so like an interim period and the omnifest event was last year this was right? actually m close to two years now it was september 10th of 2021 um and then Omni Basil was like December 3rd of that same year. Mm -hmm. But I was doing a lot of shows. Those are not the only two shows that I did in that. I did two shows in September that year, two shows in October, two shows in November. Was supposed to be two shows in December, but then everyone got COVID. Um, and anyway, so yeah, the, the, the goal of the house show project is essentially to bring together different artistic communities that wouldn't normally be in the same space. So initially, this was mostly the angle that that was put forward was mostly through like the musical realm of like different genres that wouldn't normally be on the same bill. But then as the project evolved, it became also 
other sides of art in general, other artistic mediums, interactive installations, visual art, tattoo art, workshops, um, live painting, um, different different stuff, vendors, artisan, local artists and vendors, food vendors, um, had people table, I've had um, political organizations come to table and share uh, perspective. Um, you guys have tabled before. So the, yeah, just trying to create this like incubation space, similar, really similar to MCR where people are able to connect in an environment that's not, that doesn't have very much pressure. It's this kind of, I guess the statement is like that a space is just a space and it's dependent on who activates it and the intentionality towards activating it that makes it what it is, right? Obviously there's certain physical spaces that are nicer than others, but the idea, I guess, kind of subtly is like to be like, it's just a house, but the level of quality is like as high as it possibly can without it feeling too overproduced, right? So I still wanted to have that kind of welcoming, uh, more relaxed environment, but the listening experience has to be top quality Shout out to my other engineer, Isaac. Um, Isaac Diskin releases his own music as well. He's just been an absolute uh, dream in terms of audio quality. And um, uh, yeah, there's been a lot of people along the way that have, it's really, you know, I can't name everyone. Um, one other person I would like to mention is um, my friend Ian. Ian woke up. He's helped massively with the project, really got the social media off the ground because I was not really concerned with that aspect of things. And when things were like kind of building up, he was like, yo, we should like make this. And he basically made it um, and then ran it for, for the first year that it was active. And now, now I'm running it as he moves on to, to New York and becomes more busy with his own personal um, ventures. But yeah, huge amount of help from him. So many other people, so many photographers that have come through so many incredible vendors, artists, uh, musicians that have put forward sets We've actually recorded pretty much every set. I would say maybe 90%, the 10% unfortunately lost to the sands of time due to technical difficulties. But really, the vast majority of them we have the recordings of. And the plan is to do like a compilation release um, of like different select tracks from um, years. So the 2021 comp will come first, and then 2022, and then 2023. Um, that's all in the vault. That sounds like an incredible project. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, really quick, I wanted to ask you about um, the the next band that you're going to be collaborating with for the show. What, what oh, sure. Yeah. Swivel. Um, it's this band Swivel. I connected with the lead singer, Jonathan, um, who, well, he probably may have found out of me regardless, but the drummer, Mitch, he lived at the house. Um, so we were friends at that time. He actually lived on the lot opposite my old South Miami house. He's like a frost cat, um, really cool guy. So he, 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 I guess, mentioned it to Jonathan, and then Jonathan reached out. And it was this kind of interesting thing because normally I wouldn't, you know, it's like a band hitting you up to do a show. And it's like, I guess I don't want to talk down on that, but, like, you know, normally I would need to see, like, I would want to see a more conceptual kind of approach rather than just, like, oh, let's just do a show at the, right. you know what I mean? Like, that's not what it's about. I've had people pitch that before, and it's not like I'm – I would love to, in the future, have a venue where I'm able to do that and maybe have certain things that are super intentional and then have other stuff that's, like, just allowing someone else to program what they want to program. But that's, like, not what the space is because that's not what my vision is or what the collective, what I perceive the collective w vision to be. And it's also not really realistic for the space because it's, like, literally a house, you know? It's not, I don't own of the house course, and I yeah. have other roommates. And I don't really want that vibe of, like, someone just, like, pulling up to just do a show like I just I feel like it would it would cause issues and risks so I was like initially kind of like eh, I probably won't do that but then it was weird because I was like about to send a message I was actually here at the office and I was about to send a message that that kind of would have implied that I was like somewhat closed off to it but then I got like caught up with something or so I started talking to someone and then I didn't send that message and then they sent something else that was like that kind of showed me maybe that they were more intentional about it and I was like oh cool like I'm actually kind of down to explore this and then we got a coffee and it was just super organic um respect to, to Jonathan um so yeah simpler event I mean it's just five indie bands um I think like 
five vendors, one food vendor, um, Micah Amani will be f uh, photographing there, uh, like a really cool uh, artist in the scene as well. Um, and it's actually my, uh, uh, probably my final show with Isaac at the engineering board because he's moving off to, to LA to explore that. So um, kind of getting that, that one, one more show in with, with him. Um, yeah, should be cool. We've done like 20, a little bit more than 20 shows all time. I've slowed it down now because I'm super focused on MCR and, and other projects as well, like Casa Crea, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, I don't think we'll get the chance to talk about Casa Yeah, Crea. we <laughs> might not get to talk. Yes, I, I'm one to, 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 just to quickly say, Casa Crea is like an artist collective that I co-founded with Drew, Dang Drew it, uh, Kennedy, Kennedy to Kennedy, and then um, Lunes, the founder of, of Always Lunes, and then we brought in um, Sam, who uh, founded Omega Spit, co-founded Omega Spit. We brought her yep. in later. Um, and it's just an artist collective where people come together to create in the same space, vibe out. It's like an intentionally chill space. It's like not really like a hu like we're not trying to be hype or anything like that. Like, um, yeah, and we just bring people together. We did like an open deck thing recently. We're doing a DJ Academy event on the 20th. So if you guys want to learn about mixing or hone your skills or connect with other people, come through on the 20th flyer will be posted soon. We also have an open mic event this Sunday um, at this new venue, Dear Eleanor, uh, which you guys have, I think that's where the 29th is? Yes. Yeah, cool. That's yeah. our event of the 29th, and that's also where your uh, BYO USB Correct, yeah, BYO USB. Yeah, which was. the second one will likely be the 30th, so keep an eye out for that, but it's not 100% confirmed yet. But check out casacrea.mia, incredible project. I definitely wish we had more time to talk about it in depth because I'm equally as passionate about it and I put as much possible effort into it as I can and huge credit to the other organizers who have helped out a lot with that project that is like super important parallel mission to Miami Community Radio and House Show so I want to make sure that that um, those three are given the same uh, the same light and, and put on the same pedestal but yeah I know we're, we're short on time so I'll leave it there but yeah yeah Thank you. Thank you so much, Philip. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Can yes. I like play my track as I go off? I just re realized I didn't yeah, yeah. play yeah, it. It's, it's shorter. Yeah, it's like two sure. minutes. I just kind of want to play it to show everyone. Do you mind if we do like our little outro first and then you play it? Sure. Yeah, that All works right, better. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, just to close out, um, that was our last episode for the season for Panavision. We'll be back next season uh, to basically to tell you all yeah. about more creatives, entrepreneurs, organizations, and shit that is happening in South Florida. Yes, if you wanna be on the podcast, just reach out. Um, if you wanna be on the directory, just reach out. We're very welcoming and I don't know, we'd love to have you. Um, and also if you enjoyed our podcast and you want others to start listening to it and engaging with it, um, please leave us a review and also follow us and um, on Spotify, YouTube, Apple, wherever you get your all podcasts. The, all the platforms. All those platforms. Dang yeah. platforms. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Also, listen to this dope track. Again. Again.